Okay, so in the last episode, we created the basic lexer, which is able to lex basically every single token um, that we defined right here, but it's missing a few. For example, it can't handle identifiers, it can't handle strings, it can't handle comments, and it can't handle keywords. So um, in today's episode, we're going to be completely finishing out the lexer. It's going to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, and yeah, so let's get started. So um, let's get started by being able to handle the comments. So right here we have the number handler. And what I want to do is actually do something for the string. So let's handle strings as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a, I'm going to copy this regex must compile for this. I'm going to go um, right here below skip and I'm going to define um, two more things. So here we're going to have the string handler and let's define comment handler as well. So the string handler is going to have a regular expression for a string. For our language, we're going to have double quotes followed by as many characters that are not double quotes, um, like so, followed by a single double quotes, like so. So this is going to be double quotes followed by Every single character that is not a double quote, followed by double quote, right? So pretty simple, but um, pretty important. And this is going to be for strings. For comments, um, it's also pretty simple. So comments, we're going to do backslash forward slash backslash forward slash dot star, which is going to match everything from forward slash forward slash up to the new line. And this is going to be the comment handler. So let's actually go ahead and define these two methods uh, down below. So first things first, let's define the string handler method. I'm going to copy the numeric handler method. So we have a starting point for both of these. So um, let's just do the string handler like so and the comment uh, handler like so. So uh, for the string handler, let's just delete all of this and all of this. Okay. So to handle strings, um, it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the match, which is going to be uh, regex dot uh, find uh, string. Yeah, I cannot type find string index. And we're going to pass in the lex dot remainder as we typically do. Now that we have the match, we want to actually pull out the string literal, L-I-T-E-R-E-L -E colon equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the lex.remainder at the index of match subscript 0 to match subscript um, 1, like so. And this is going to be from the start to the end, like so. Next things we're going to do is we're just going to do a lex.push. We're going to do a new token string string literal like so and lex dot advanced n the lang of string um, literal like so and there we go so this is literally how we handle strings beautiful now what we want to do is handle comments which comments are also very incredibly simple um yeah so let's go ahead and handle comments so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a match and what we're going to do is we are going to do colon equals, and then we're going to do regex dot uh, find string index of lex dot no remainder, like so. Then we're going to do a lex dot advanced n of match uh, subscript one, like so. Now, one thing you'll notice is this code right here should be identical to this code right here. So we copy this and we can see they are. So ideally comment handler can also get handled by skip handler. So let's go up here and change this to also be skip handler. Beautiful. Now we've handled four of our five complicated expressions. Let's next handle um, a very, very, very important one and by far the most important one really. And this is the symbol handler. So. Uh, let us get started with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to define what a symbol is using regular expressions as expected. So I'm going to define the symbol handler. Now a symbol is a single 
A through Z character, right? If you think about it, right? Um, languages like ours, you have to start, you cannot start an identifier with something like an underscore or uh, not an underscore, sorry, something like a um, dash, or you can't start it with something like a number because that can cause very obvious issues. So for us, what we'll allow is underscore like foo or foo and then underscores and, you know, etc. right? So what we're going to do is we're going to define um, the numeric expression for this to be a through z, um, a through z underscore. So these are the valid beginnings. So it has to match one of these. And then what we're going to say is it then can have a whole bunch of a through z, a through z, uh, 0 through 9. So it can also have numbers and underscores as many times till the end. And this is going to be a symbol handler right here. So let's get started and actually parse this out. So symbol handler. I'm going to copy the string handler. And let's define that symbol. Oh, what the heck? There we go. Symbol handler, like so. Okay. So a symbol handler is a little bit more complicated because what we need to do first is get the match, right? So I'm going to just do this regex.find string. And we're just going to pass in the lex.remainder, like so. So this is going to be the match of whatever symbol we just found. Okay. Then what we need to do, and this is kind of the hard part is we need to define how do we differentiate between something that is something like let foo equal 45. Let is a reserved keyword, but foo obviously isn't. This is a user defined keyword or word, right? So what we want to do is we want to differentiate between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tokens.go file and in here, we are actually going to define a map for all of our reserved keywords. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do var reserved lookup. And this is a map of string to uh, token kinds. And this is gonna be equal to, again, the map of string to token kinds, like so. So now we can come in here and we can define all of our favorite um, reserved keywords. So for example, let's, is a reserved keyword, which is obviously bound to the let token. Um, we will have const, which is defined to const. Ah. Uh, we will have class, which is obviously with class. We will have new, which is with new. We will have, what else, imports, uh, which is with imports and you get the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and just really quickly copy down the rest of these. But every single reserved keyword, conveniently, are all listed right here. All of these, we need to have a um, lookup inside of this map. So let's now go back to the lecture.go, and we have this match. What we plan on doing with this match is checking if it exists inside of the map. If it does, it's a reserved keyword. If it doesn't, it is um, a identifier or a user defined word. So let's go ahead and do this. So, uh, what we're going to do, oh, wrong file. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and this is actually going to be the length of match, right? Cause we want to advance past the length of match. Okay. There we go. Right. So now what we want to do is we want to define what is our check. So we're going to do, we're going to get out a kind and, and we're going to get out if, um, exists And this is going to be the reserved LU at the match, like so, right? If it is uh, exists, then we're gonna handle this case. So if it exists, right? If it exists, we're going through this case. And what that means is, is we need to push a token where it's a new token, where the kind is the kind here, right? So kind in the value is the match, like so. And I could rename this, in fact, I will. Uh, I'm gonna just rename this to value, like so, right? So it's kind value, beautiful. Um, if it does not exist, right? So if this is failed, that means it is not a known keyword in that map. Then all we do is we do lex.push and we do new token and the kind is an identifier. 
and the value is still the value like so and then obviously in either case we need to advance past the match like so and that right there is how we actually end up handling um the sorry where am i at go to the elixir right here and this is how we handle the symbols like so so we can actually test this now um i went to the repo and i created a test um markdown example file where if you want you can copy some code from the language and this is a fully featured program i'm just going to change the language to be like rust or something so we can actually have some highlighting real quick but you'll see um, this is an example of the syntax that this Lexer should now fully be able to handle. So let's see if it does by just running the code. And let's just do git go run source main.go. And I need <laughs> to change this to go to 01.lang instead of 00.lang. Right? And look at that. We now have every single token inside of our language perfectly handled. Now, one thing you'll notice, if you look at the code here for the strings, right? So in this code, there's one place where we have a string literal. It's defined like this. We say const directory of type string is this right here. But I want you to notice is the path to directory part, right? This includes the quotation mark in the string. If we're in a string, we already know there's a quotation. So what we could do is just remove this. That is up to you. I'm gonna show you how you can remove it real quick. So let's go to the string handler in here. And what we wanna do is um, get the remainder from the zeroth index plus one to the match minus one. That's it. Then what we wanna do is we need to get the length of this plus two, right? We need to include the closing and opening bounds. And if we run this now, what you'll see is we have the path to directory is now properly handled, right? Because we've now just removed, we've truncated off the quotation marks. So uh, I just wanted to show that you don't have to do this. Some languages will keep it in, some languages won't. In the Lexer, I like to take it off as it makes it a little bit cleaner. but. Um, that is it. As you can see, we have all of our tokens in the language perfectly parsed. It's quite beautiful, actually. Um, and now in the next video, uh, let me just clear this. In the next video, we'll actually get started with the parser. And this is what the whole series is all about. The parser is the bread and butter of the series. The Lexer has a little bit of complicated parts, right? Like this regular expression stuff. But once you wrap your head around it, it, it really is a quite simple parser or Lexer, sorry right? We match every single token type um, and we attempt to parse it. If it can't be parsed, we continue to the next one until we have a valid handler. The parser, on the other hand, we're going to be using a technique called prep parsing, which I'm going to be explaining a lot more in depth in the next episode, but um, that's the bread and butter, right? Lexing is a very basic primitive step. It's just taking your string of source code and splitting it up into predetermined um, lexical tokens. Parsing takes that one dimensional structure, right? It takes your array of tokens and it actually translates it into a tree with other trees, as subtrees, et cetera. And that right there is what this whole series is all about. Once we have that tree, we can then traverse the tree and do code generation or traverse the tree and do type checking, or traverse the tree and do linting, traverse the tree and do interpretation, you get the idea. So in the next episode, I'm really excited because we're gonna actually get started with parsing. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me on Discord. Until the next episode, happy coding.